Uh, I think it, I know it would be a value to myself. I can't speak for for board members, or uh, and I would like to think we could do that collectively. I think there's value, uh, you know, under under our current uh, laws uh, in Tennessee. I could talk individually to board members. I can't talk to more than one board member at a time. Um, and there's some value there, obviously, but I think there 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 there's a an opportunity now for us to sit down and talk. So the normal for me is to find out. And I think it would be uh, fair for me to hear from board members, uh, them to have the opportunity to, to hear from me on some, some of the issues that I think are important to us, uh, and to see where we are. Um, I, I, I've all, you know, I've, I've been relatively silent the last uh, eight, eight or nine weeks. Um, and, I, and, and most of you have been around a while. And, and you've gotten to know me and how I think about doing business. Um, and, and I also want to always uh, be fair uh, to, uh, to those that I work with and those that I work for. And when that process started uh, formally, uh, I can remember the date. It was January the 21st. In fact, Channel 3 reported it before the meeting that afternoon, uh, which I found interesting. But... Uh, being, I think, I think David, you had in that particular piece a source, um, and I understand that. But so you know, it, it became a formal uh, talking uh, point at, at, at that particular time, and I wanted the board to have time to do uh, what the board needed to do, and so we went through that that process, and uh, that process took the better part of six weeks or four weeks. Uh, so anyway. Um, Normal for me is, is to sit, get to, to be able to sit down with our board, and let's discuss some things and let's see where we uh, need to go moving forward. What kind of toll has, has this process taken on you and your family personally? Uh, personally, David, it's it's uh, it's been hard. It's been terribly hard. You know, we're a family of public educators, uh, and I think I think it, it, you know not talk much about my family because it's not something I normally do, but. You know, I've got a wife that's retired uh, that taught uh, for this district for 30 years. I've got a daughter now in her 11th year uh, in this system. Uh, we're, we're a family of public educators, and, and it's, it's who we are. It's who we, we uh, believe in. You know, we, this may sound a little corny, but when we sit around the dinner table, you know, I, I mentioned granddaughter. You know, the granddaughter coming along has, has been very um, good for our family because we see, that, you know, she, my daughter lives close to us, so we see, you know, we see her every day. And so, for us to have a daughter now, and this is not why y'all came, but just a little bit of personal information, you know, like most kids, my daughter for ten years was was, uh, uh, you know, was finding her way and doing her thing, and 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 had her own home. And as you would expect, like the two ladies sitting here, you you're not always around your parents. But now the granddaughter's here, and we see her every day. So it's been a dynamic that's made a difference to the family in terms of communication and relationships and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, we we talk a lot about education. You know, I, I, people think, well, shoot, you know, you would expect me to do that, but my wife still does that, and, and certainly my daughter does that. So we talk about that. public education is who we are, and so it's been hard. Um, you know, that's that's part of where I am right now, David. I'm, I want us, me, I want this Board of Education, I think they want to do this, I want this school system to get back to doing the business that, that's important. And we, I have not been able to do that. I, I, it's been a distraction. I think it's been a distraction for the Board. Uh, I know it's been a distraction for the Board. I know it's been a distraction for this for this uh, school system and and uh, and for this community and so for, with that being said, being more I guess you said personal, it, it's been very difficult. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not one to. I'm not, it's not an easy thing for me to talk about. You know, me. Um, I, I did. I started this this business 41 years ago, and uh, I was young. And, and I've always been in positions, uh, even then, and I was, I was head coaching and, and doing some kind of things like that at, at a very young age. And, uh, and so I've always been in positions where uh, 
you know, uh, let your let your work speak for itself. Don't I don't speak much about me, and I, I'm not comfortable doing it now. But the fact of the matter is, the, the last couple of months doesn't define me either. Um, I know who I am. I know how I do business. I know how I think about this business. Um, I know, at least I hope I know how uh, how I believe we need to to uh, to deal with problems. Uh, this is this was one that is was very difficult on a lot of levels. Um, uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's been hard. Will there be acrimony between you and the board being able to hinder you getting things done going forward because of that? Well, I hope not. You know, that, again, I think that's why you have to, um, you have to, to, uh, to take that, that time and, uh, and talk. Um, and that's some, something that I want to do. Um, I heard, I heard one board member last night, you know, Kind of allude to that, you know, talking about well, we need to we need to sit down and talk. Maybe I think I heard Rhonda say use the phrase, you know, we need to have a come to Jesus moment. That's fine. Uh, that'd be good for me too. There's some things I want to share uh, with the board, some feelings that I have, and some details that I think are fair that all nine board members need to hear together. I think they're important. Um, you know, a board of education is very difficult. And, and, and I think of them and the complexities of the board. If they're really doing what they should be doing, they come to a table once a month or twice a month. They discuss issues around around public education. Um, and then, other than that, there's not a lot of conversation. There's not a lot of opportunities. Our board members, you know, are very restricted to to what they can and cannot do. And I think there was evidence of that last night. I, I truly believe, you know, it was said uh, during the meeting, and I know it was said after the meeting because I, I, I know some of some of you guys asked board members this. I don't think nine people came in that ring last night and knew exactly how that was going to turn out. I, I mean that, um, and I mean that from my perspective. But I also mean that for them. I don't think there was there was any one person. Uh, from the chairman to to uh, to the least experienced board member in that in that room that knew how that was going to turn out last night. And so that's that's kind of how it should work. Uh, but it also you know that's why y'all are here today too. You know if it hadn't turned out that way, there would have been an interim superintendent sitting here that you'd been talking to. So uh, you know that's kind of how it is. Some uh, board members were under the impression that you didn't want the job anymore. What was the turning point for you? You know, I, I never said I didn't want the job. I believe what I said was if it's a, if it's a time, and that, this is how much this means to me, if ever the time comes that I'm in the way of progress of this school system, I need to get out of the way. You know, I've, I've been around so long with so many different... Um, I've been in this room. Um, this is my 20th year of, sen of central office work out of 41. I've been in this room since, you know, 96. And I've seen, I've seen a lot of things. And I, I've, uh, I've been in involved in a lot of things. And, you know, um, and I, I, it, it's... It's important to me never <clears throat> just a moment. Now give me a moment. Sorry about that. 
it's important for me to never think I am uh, a barrier to the progress of the school system. And I mean that. Um, people here know that. That's something that hadn't, hadn't just been said recently. Um, I've got friends of mine, and I don't have many. You know, I've got a lot of folks who, who I count as, as, uh, as people who, um, who I, I rely on to give me information, talk to me about things. But I've got, I've got three or four friends that uh, when I took this job, and I told, I told them, if I don't, if I'm not doing the things that need to happen every day, I need to hear that. And I trust them. They'll do it. I mean, they'll tell me. And that's kind of where I am. So, you, you, you know, you, I'm to a point in my life and in my career that the school system um, is, is bigger than any one person. And, uh, and, and I mean that. You know, it's an important job. It's, a, it's, a, you know, it's kind of a 24-7 job. I've learned that the last five years, and not just in the last two months. Uh, you, it's a... It's something that you that you uh, you know you carry with you every day, and and uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's something that uh, that I take very seriously. But it's it, it's important to me. It's a community I grew up in, as many of you did, uh, David did, you know, Greg's here, Greg did, and 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 it means to it means something to me, and and uh, yeah. Um. A lot of community members and parents, they've been, they've been upset the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you can go on being a good superintendent if you don't have this, the community support? And how do you regain those people's trust? Well, one, one thing I, I intend to do now, obviously, is to, to be much more vocal about some things. As I said, the, 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 uh, the Udawa situation created a, um, a life of its own, if you will. Uh, there were things about that. Uh, there, there were legal issues that had to be, that had to run their course. Um, there were, um, there were other factors at that particular time uh, that uh, um, that needed to to uh, to come and go to happen. Uh, you know, for the most part, obviously there there are other. Uh, moments that will have to be dealt with with regard to, to, to students or adults but for you know in particular for me the 15th was a was a moment you know I was to testify uh, which I did and uh, and so you know that particular at that particular time if you'll recall the board had already decided to to uh, entertain the idea of a buyout and so from the 15th to last night um, you know, there was a there was a period of, of 10, 15 days that uh, uh, needed to go. You know, and and uh, so last night, here you know here we are. Several board members had expressed um, feelings of being left in the dark. Um, moving forward, how will you improve communications in that sense? And also, do you regret firing or letting go, eliminating the communication? Director position? Yes, two, two or three questions there. I'll, let me let me start with, uh, if I could, with that one. You know, one of the things, obviously, that I want to discuss with the board uh, almost immediately, and I may do it Thursday night, certainly not Thursday night, next Thursday night. We've got a work session scheduled for this Thursday. Uh, we've got a board meeting next Thursday to, to re, uh, rethink about opening the communications office. It's been, it's, it was closed five years ago. Uh, I don't want to really get into the detail of that unless you have an interest in that. A couple of you will remember some of the some of the issues surrounding that. We we need to communicate. We're a big enough, complex enough system uh, where it's not ju not not just about this particular moment in time. We we've, we've we've probably needed a communications office uh, since we merged, and so this this you know we we had. We had a period of time when Jesse was here where we had a communications office. We didn't. We had a communications office most of Jim's tenure. We've not had one during the last five years with me, four and a half years with me. It's time to, to revisit that. Um, I've got some, and, and I've had thoughts about that. I've got some ideas about that. I want to talk to the board about that. Uh, a bit premature, but I know this, and, and I don't mind saying this with Greg in the room, 
board members have talked to me about communications uh, office before December. Uh, uh, so, you know, it's something that I think we need to seriously look at, and, uh, and we will. You mentioned uh, that you've been fairly silent the last eight to ten weeks. Are the things you want to say, do you feel like there have been things said, written, or broadcast that you want to respond to, things that are untrue, do you need to? Oh, yeah, sure. Right now? Yeah, not right now. Well, that was a good time. Got a microphone. Yeah, but y'all are, are real responsive, David. Y'all come back. Um, I think that what I would like to do, just being honest with you, is I want to sit down with the board. I like to do things the way that I think are appropriate to do them, and I don't like uh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to say things just because I feel a certain way or think a certain way, without first having the the, uh, the mutual respect of having an opportunity to sit down with the board and talk about some of those things. Um, we've got to, and and you ask a, you ask a really. I anticipated the question because it would be one I would ask. What, how do we get back to the normal? What does that mean? For me, that, that starts with, with uh, trust. That, tr that starts with confidence. That starts with uh, developing a, um, uh, a set of, of uh, values and beliefs. Um, you know, I want to do my job. I, I, want, uh, I want the board to, to have confidence in me. I want the board to understand, you know, my expectations of them and hopefully their ex expectations of me. I want them to, to be confidential. Um, I, there, there, there are things I think we, I know I do, I hope they do, I think they do because I've talked to them enough individually to know that there's, this is a good time for us to reflect on some things and figure out how to better ourselves moving forward. And I think I heard that last night from a couple of board members. What do we do from this point to move forward? And, uh, and, and to, to your point, David, no, I think there have been occasions in the last eight or ten weeks that I think some things have been said um, by the media and others that, uh, um, you know, I don't know. I can't, I can't put myself in your position. Um, I can't. And, and you, you guys do what you do. And uh, there was some inaccuracies, obviously. You've even said that. Some others in this room have said that. Uh, other, other than that, you know, I don't want to relive the past with, with that. I mean, we can sit here and I could debate some things with you and say, I, you know, but the fact of the matter is we're here. Uh, the board made a decision last night. Uh, I intend to stay. Uh, I intend to, uh, to bring to the board some things that I think this school system um, uh, needs and and uh, and bring to the community uh, some things that I th I think the system needs. Let me, let me, if I could, and, and y'all may have a lot of other questions, but while, it, while it's on my mind, let me let me say this because it's been something that's been very interesting to me. Um, as you know, I, I spent quite a bit of time last spring talking about the system's needs, and there was a lot of, you know. Uh, debate about that and, and what that meant and of course I did go and, and uh, I felt like it was a necessary I do this representing Hampton County Schools to go to the Commission and ask for some additional funding and we went through that process. A few people uh, other than a uh, half dozen or so uh, knew that through, through some of that time quite frankly I was already working with business and industry folk and I was already working with some others about uh, some of the issues around now, what's been defined as 2.0. I was already doing that. Now, and and y'all have done a good job, and I want to emphasize the fact that those, the, the, some of the negatives in, you've got to be honest with yourself, and, and you've got to be willing to dissect yourself and not be afraid to do that, to say we've got, we've got these kinds of, of, of challenges in Chattanooga and Hampton County and in this in this this conversation, education, and we we this is our starting point, folks. We've got to get better, and I'm not going to change that. As long as I'm superintendent, we've got to do some things. I think as a community, with regard to public education, um, and 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 so the the conversation around 2.0, people have said things. 
about that, I, I have very, uh, very much been involved in it. I spent a lot of time. I was at the table, the first conversation about that. It started, uh, it started over a year ago. Um, and, and I'm hoping, and, and, and I don't know how much I'm saying right now, to emphasize the fact that for me, and I know there are going to be people who, 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 who might have different opinions about that, but I don't think you, we're not going to get better unless all of us want us to. And, and, and that means and we can't exclude any group. I, I don't care if it's foundation people. I don't care if it's, it's communities in poverty and everything in between. And, uh, and we've, got, we've got to be willing to do that. And, and until, until we're, you know, we can set some of that stuff aside and say, okay, the most important topic for us right now is not to worry about who's been doing or who hasn't been doing, but now all of us have a chance to get involved in this to improve ourselves, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, not do, we'll not do what we need to do and we'll not do it as, as, uh, as well as we can in this community. I, I'm, I'm, um, and I hope I'm okay saying this to you because the newspaper's not in the room, but, I, you know, as you know, because this is what y'all do every day. You, so, you know, Joan put out her first piece, what, four days ago on the poverty topic, right? She's been working on that a year, and I was at the I was at the table with her a year ago, starting those conversations because that's a part of us. That's who we are, and in, unless we recognize the fact that we we've got some challenges now, and it involves our children, um, that that is not we won't we won't get better across this you know entire community and so I've been involved in those conversations and and I hope to continue to be involved in those conversations and I'll I'll say this to end that one if I weren't at the end of the table here today and somebody else was sitting in this chair and you were interviewing an interim or you're doing whatever you're doing I'm, I'm hoping that that individual who that might be also is is here to do that kind of work because that's what superintendents in my opinion are supposed to do they're supposed to build um, a conversation around the needs of, of the entire school system. And we are very much like most urban school systems in this country. We're very diverse and we've got a, a ton of challenges and it's going to take the entire community to solve some of those challenges. So we're, um, number one, you want to educate the students, but the biggest thing is you got to keep them safe and we have all these threats and stuff and hundreds and hundreds of kids sitting out from school. Are you planning you met with the sheriff, you're planning on doing some kind of drastic changes to try to address something? Well, safety is all, all obviously an issue. Um, you, you know, that is, that is primary every day. You know, we've got uh, uh, 43,000 kids, and we've got a, a bunch of, uh, of uh, uh, schools. And, and uh, honestly, last week, uh, I can think back when I was principal over 20 years ago, and uh, uh, to me, I don't know if this is the right thing to say or not, but to me it was more like a the, the, the proverbial old um, bomb threat week around spring break. And we always had that phenomena uh, when the weather started to change that the bomb threat calls were going to happen and things were going to... And so last week it wasn't the bomb threat week; it was the writing on the wall, or the. And we had a couple of more serious incidents. I believe some knives were found on the student. We had a couple of those, those uh, more serious situations. But as you as you said, it started on a Friday and it went through a week until last Friday. Now, what's interesting to me about that is because of the nature of of, of how that was being communicated on the bathroom wall, whatever. Very difficult to find somebody unless somebody tells us, you know, another no student, and you know how it works with social media. Right now, these two ladies are on the, on the cell phone, um, doing their Facebook or their you know, they're putting their you know their thing out there publicly on what I'm saying. Uh, I find that very interesting, by the way. I don't do that stuff, so my wife shows me that. But um, and then Friday, last this past Friday, it stopped. Why? Because every student that we were notified of every student was caught last Friday. I believe five students were involved in one thing or another in three different schools. All five of them were caught. Now, 
here I sit, and I'm saying that on Tuesday, and and unfortunately, I know how thick, you know, I know how teenagers are. It's it's one of those uh, one of those deals now where a teenager is going to test the boundaries, test the limits. You know, we may find a note that's not complimentary or uh, is designed to cause uh, angst um, tomorrow. So we'll we'll deal with that. The other, the other thing I'll say about that um, highly sensitive time. This uh, this whole situation uh, that's occurred uh, has created a lot of um, uh, very um, uh, very emotional administrators and teachers right now in our school system. We're gonna ha we're gonna report everything, and uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, yeah, we went through a week last week where we saw that for for four straight days. What do you think the greatest challenge is moving forward? I, I, for me or for us? For us. Well, for us, you know, I, I had a I had a lobby full of my staff members last night that met me. Uh, I had a office full of people different this morning. I didn't call them to the office. Um, we've got strong relationships. I've been around so long, you know, um, and I hate to say this, it's going to sound a little bragging, but I'm the guy that's been on this campus now. I'm the only one here that's been on this campus this long. And so, you know, uh, I won't believe that's because of my age. I'm a little younger than most of them. But, uh, we, you know, um, I hear things, and I heard a couple of things last night that, uh, that concerned me. Uh, I, today, phone calls, emails, text messages, I probably had a hundred contacts today. Um, every one of them positive. Every one of them positive. Um, the only negative thing I've seen today, uh, I either saw on Chattanooga.com or, or maybe somewhere else. Um, and that's true. Um, so, you know, I, I, I question, you know, uh, and, and, it, and, and, and to further explain, and I know it's easy for people to sit there and type uh, 25 words or something and, and whatever or not. I'm not one that does that very easily. And so, I don't know, you know, people, moving forward, um, I think we've got to get back to focused on our core, core mission. And that's for all of us, for me, that's for the school board, and that's for us. Um, importance of that right now, and I don't want to get into this unless you have specific questions because I don't think you're here for this purpose. This testing situation has been problematic. We're sitting here today on March the 8th, Tuesday, March the 8th, and unless Kirk Kelly, and he'll alert me when we do, we do not have testing materials for the spring testing. Why is that concerning me? Well, we've been prepared for this. We started out over a month ago with online testing, and here we are a month later, and we're to paper and pencil testing. Okay. We're still sitting here waiting for materials to come. There, it was reported to us, and y'all have reported this, over half the system systems in the state of Tennessee have already completed their first round of assessments. We haven't even done our first round of assessments, and here's why that's a problem for me. If, if not among a dozen problems, so you've got lots of systems in the state that have already completed their first round of testing, which means teachers have had many more days to get their kids ready for second round testing, which comes April, May, and our window of opportunity for our second round testing for our teachers has shrunk and continues to shrink. So you can't convince me that it's a level playing field for our teachers. It's not. Now I know that they've taken away the the the, uh, the, the part of their the, the student piece uh, having to do with uh, you know with the teacher evaluation, and I think that was a, a the right move. But here's the deal: our people are just like everybody else; they're very competitive. They want their children to do well. Parents want their children to do well, and so we've got a disadvantage, in my opinion, in Hamilton County because of, of where we are uh, with regard to this whole testing uh, calendar. Um, so, and you didn't come, I didn't want to get into a lot of that, but it's, it's a part. So we've got the testing thing. We've got a budget. And I'm not going to back off on, on, uh, on what I said last spring. You know, the easy thing for me to do is, is, you know, 
get passive about that and say, well, those things I spoke about, no, I, I didn't do that. Uh, I, that's, to me, we, those are real needs. We have not had, in my opinion, and, and if I'm by myself, I'm by myself, but I don't think I am, we have not had the kind of support locally that, that we need to have. We are in our 11th year without any local increase in funding. And, I, and, and growth, yeah, I don't want to talk about growth. I want to talk that because growth, we know what growth means. Okay? We, we know what budgets look like in terms of, of expenditures and revenue. And so uh, that, that debate, I don't want to debate that anymore. I want us to talk about is it time, is it appropriate for us to get more additional resources? We've got, we've got schools that are, um, that are underperforming schools, that we know who those are, we, we, we've got to do, we've got uh, lots of things not to get into, I'm not going to back off on where I was last spring with what I think the school system needs. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to revisit the perception thing just a little bit. Right. Because even though you got a lot of positive feedback today, you know, we are still seeing right. the sure. repercussions of what has been said and written, and there are a lot of people who have a certain perception. Sure. So I'd like for you to address those people. For those people who think Rick Smith is a guy who simply wanted to take a lot of money and run without working for it, what would you tell them? Well, first of all, they don't know Rick Smith, David. Rick's, you, you, you said it, so I'm, I'm going to go there. Perception. Uh, not my word, your word. And, and I believe that. And I didn't build that perception. People's perceptions are built around what they read and what they hear. Uh, that doesn't, that does, you don't have to invest much in that. Um, I, you know, and I, I'm not trying to be critical of the community, uh, but I was disappointed last spring. Uh, I would have hoped there would have been hundreds of people in those 11 community meetings. You attended several of them. There weren't. They weren't there. Um, when we were going through our, our period six weeks ago over here, y'all were there. How many people showed up? I mean, Jonathan opened the door for anybody and everybody. First night we had four. The next night, the next week we had two. Uh, so, yeah, the perception issue and the social media issue and the ease of, of how people use their, their personal devices and whatever uh, has changed things a lot with regard to, to uh, human interaction and some of the issues and and that kind of thing. So th that that doesn't afford people to actually come out and, and meet and talk to, interact with, hear, debate me or, or anybody else for that matter. And so, um, you know, um, that that's in, that's something that uh, going back, you know, if if to your question, going back now, uh, with regard to having a, a you know a uh, communications office, communications director, whatever the title might end up being, uh, I certainly think we're at that place because I think I, I see it as, as you do. This is what y'all do every day. It's not what I do. I'm not a communications person. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an educator. I'm not, you know, I don't do what you do. And, and so we need somebody that, uh, that wakes up every day doing what you do because the game has changed. Ten years ago, ladies, if y'all had been sitting here, your left hand right now would be on top of the table. It wouldn't be sitting in your lap with your cell phone. But that's the way it is now, and I understand that. So that that has changed in your in your world, and it's certainly changed in our world, and we've got to evolve and understand that, and so it's important. So I, I, I don't know if I answered your question very well, David, but um, people that know Rick Smith, know Rick Smith. They know who I am and what I do and how I, I, I think about uh, things and, and, um, and, and, uh, and the importance of some of those things. And uh, I'm sorry for the emotion earlier, but that's part of it. it. It's that serious and it's that personal to me. And so, you know, and I'm not, uh, and I'll be critical of myself a bit, I'm not real warm and fuzzy in terms of of, uh, of, of not being genuine. Um, I don't know how to, any other way to say that. I, I'm not a, I'm not real good at uh, just, you know, being chummy about things. I, I'm, I'm pretty serious about most things. And so, you know, that, uh, that I, I understand how that is. I had, 
through my entire career. When I was principal, I was pretty much no nonsense kind of guy. And uh, but uh, it worked, and it worked for my faculty, and it worked for my, you know, my parents and my kids. And uh, people came to appreciate that. You know, I think I want to get back to that. That's important to me right now to get us back doing what we, we do well. And, and we I haven't been able to do that in the last two months. Will you consider making any changes to your senior staff? You know, um, I, I'm sitting here a day after uh, a pretty significant moment last night, and, and I'm not going to get into names, and I'm not going to get into any of that stuff, but, uh, you know, I've already lost my secretary. I had a secretary, Carol McDowell, and I met 25 years ago. And, and I don't think I need to say any more about that. You know, um, there, there are several people in this office that have come by through, through the last several weeks and have talked about things very personal to them in terms of timelines and other issues. And so, um, you know, and some of those people were in that lobby last night and some of those people are in that office this morning at 7 o'clock because I'm here. And so, you know, I, but it's March, too, folks. And in our business, March to May is significant. Uh, people, people will make decisions. They'll make personal decisions. They'll make professional decisions that are personal to, with regard to, to their job and who they are. And, what, uh, and so that, that can create some things. And, and, uh, and not to go into any detail, but um, uh, it, without exception, and, you know, there, there have been some things that have been written and said about senior staff members now, and, I, and I've been one for 20 years. Uh, easy targets. Central office is always easy target. And uh, I hate that. We talked about, we've talked about how do you improve that image or what does that mean or whatever, but it is what it is. And so you have to accept that when you come to central services because um, you're, you're you, uh, but every one of those folks that are in senior positions, except for a couple like Christy who does finance, were very effective principals. They did they did good work, and they they won't they wouldn't be here. Um, you know, I find it so interesting that they were so effective at one point in their career, and they get to central office, and now they're they're not, and that's that's simply not the case. But that's that's like I said, that's easy target. People can wake up in the morning and not like something and say, well, that's sorry, central office, and, and, and uh, you know. So it, it's just how it is. We accept that. We, we go on with business. Last night, one of the board members, uh, who's actually just in here, but I think you walked out, made a motion to terminate you. Uh, that motion, it died. It wasn't seconded. But knowing how he feels and how some of those other board members feel, can you keep that relationship with them? Yeah, I mean... Uh, The, the experiences of, of working in, in central office for as long as I have and, and the simple fact, and I'm not going to say that any other community is different. I think they're probably very, very similar in a lot of ways when you look at how in the world would you compare Chattanooga to anywhere else, but this is where we live and this is where I work. And, um, I've learned one thing that I thought I knew a lot about five years ago that has absolutely been... Um, uh, not an eye opener, but it's been affirmed for me as a politics. I mean, it's it's it is what it is, and uh, um, I, there there are always things that I see and I hear and I read that are politically motivated. Uh, it's amazing, and y'all know this because you 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 come to board meetings and you talk come to other meetings and then what do y'all do? Y'all hang around for two minutes or two hours after the meeting and you talk to board members and you talk to other people that might be there. And you at times will hear what I hear. You'll hear a different story. So things that might be said in a public meeting 15 minutes later might be a different story one-on-one. -on -one. So that's politics. And, and so I understand that. And y'all do too. Um, you know, Greg made his motion. Uh, he's here. Maybe somebody wants to ask him. Maybe you've already asked him why he did. Uh, he didn't get a second. Um, I don't know if he expected to or not. I don't know, quite frankly. Um, 
but I also think that the fact that he didn't get a second and it wasn't even uh, a, a, up for for a vote, up for a debate, uh, is, is, speaks for itself as well. Um, you mentioned your, just to make clear, you feel like you're on the same page, the same team as the Chamber 2.0, this movement that's going on. You're not opposite forces, you're on the same team as them. Well, um, yeah, David, I, I, I've been on the, on the same team, if I'm understanding the question. I was there when the discussions began. I was there when all of the, all of the construct of that was going on. Uh, I was there when uh, we expanded that group to include several others. I was there when at the beginning of uh, this year when the three, if you will, the three significant pieces of that early childhood, uh, the K-12 piece and, and, uh, and you know, Leslie, Leslie's driving the early childhood piece and, of course, we are driving the K-12 and Bill and, and the Chamber are driving the, the uh, and, I'm, and higher ed are driving the workforce development it, uh, higher ed piece. And then, and then uh, this whole reason that y'all are here today began, the, the, uh, Discussion about me and and the distraction, and then obviously the the buyout discussion began. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, you know I'm 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 going back in this week. I mean, it's where I am. Having said that, and the answer to your to my first question about whether you're staying or not, it, it appears as though, if I'm to believe everything that I read, that that some members of that group had been sort of moving forward with the concept that it's going to be a world without Rick Smith. Right. Because that's where everyone thought they were at. Okay, that's apparently not the case now. So if some of those people still have some of those feelings, is there a price? Can you be bought out by forces other than... Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's, I thought that might be where you were going. So let, let, me, let, me, let me start by saying this. I don't think very, very many people in this room, minus Greg, thought I'd be sitting at the end of this table today. I know y'all are wrong, but y'all can edit that. Anybody in here think I'd been down here today? Good. Uh, that's just a 12%, 14%. Um, and then, so that'd be a fair percentage out there, you know, honestly. Um, so yeah, I mean the, the the stage had been set. Y'all had helped set it, right? And and so you know there were there was a lot of um, uh, folks. You know I, I'm pretty well recognized now. I, I'm like David Carroll. Uh, I didn't get to go to lunch today that I didn't have fair fifteen or twenty people stop me in and out of a of a little local restaurant. You didn't either because we ended up being the same place. That's who we are. I mean, and, and uh, you know, we got to hang in there, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I got that. The, the thing is, it's not that I am here. I, it's not that, <laughs> yeah, obviously, I'm still here. And, and so uh, uh, I'm not going to change the way I think about things and do, do the business. So the, the, to your point, I don't blame them. I can't. I mean, I don't know how much they knew. I, I can't. I can't begin to under, you know understand how much people thought they knew about uh, this matter. And was Rick Smith going to be superintendent on March the eighth? Um, but I also know them. They're thoughtful enough folks, and this is such a. They're very passionate about this. They know education is going to drive our success or lack of, thereof. The more educated community we become, the better community we're going to become. To get into all the other intangibles, when you think about that, and and uh, you know they're all in, and and that's important, and I appreciate that. And so I don't blame them at all for moving past me. And honestly, David, and I've been pretty honest to you for 20 years. Uh, I talked to people about that on that team. I told them where I was, and I, they knew, and I, I encouraged them to move on. 
Um, and I don't, you know, I, like I said, I'm going to reconnect this week and, and face-to-face. I've been doing it on the phone, but I haven't been, you know, doing it that quite that much because I, I didn't want to create that problem. I knew if Rick showed up at certain places, it wasn't going to be about the, the, the purpose of that meeting or that moment. It was going to be about Rick, and I, that didn't need to happen. And so I talked to those folks. And, and um, so moving past me, I kind of anticipated that. Um, you know, they got invested. I know this with the whole idea of the interim discussion. Um, and David, uh, and I'll, 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 I'll say this and hush on this, I don't know much about that. Um, I chose not to talk to our board members about the interim situation. That was left to them. That was left more to Jonathan. Y'all know that. Uh, I don't know how much conversation occurred between Jonathan and the rest of his board with regard to that. I, I chose and I spoke to him about that early on once the, once the separation agreement discussion started that I wasn't going to get involved in that. I didn't know and uh, I didn't have conversations with him just being totally transparent with you and I appreciate, I hope you appreciated me not, not uh, getting in, involved in that. I didn't know what the board might have to do with regard to, and, and I'm not saying this well, but to have an interim for the interim, if that makes sense. I know they're going to have to have a superintendent in place for the day to some date in the future before they got before they got to that next step. So I was not part of that discussion, chose not to be part of it, and really didn't think it was appropriate I'd be part of that. But to be clear, there's not a price tag on you now. If, if, some, if the business community came and said, we'll give you X amount of dollars, step aside you're not interested in that is that what i'm hearing yeah you know the business community we've got a board of education and, and i've always felt this way a lot of people are going to try to tell you how to do your business they try to, people try to tell me how to do mine every day and they probably try to tell you how to do yours every day and and they don't have a clue how to do your job and mine and so i understand that the one the one unique aspect of my job everybody in this room went to school most everybody in this country went to school. Everybody thinks they can do school. But, you know, there's a certain level of organization, every organization, that, that you have to have experience to do. And so anyway, having, having said that, the business community, if, if that's their, if the business community needs to contribute to that, then that would be up to the Board of Education, David. I'm not, I'm not going to work, if, if, you're, if this is the question and you interrupt me, if the business community wants to engage me in a conversation about me leaving, I'm not going to entertain that. They need to go through the Board of Education. Because at the end of the day, the Board of Education is going to be accountable for what happens next. And that's, that's important to me. How do you still, I'm sorry, a, a little bit fuzzy on the, on the whole why thing. You presented the buyout to the board. Was it, I mean, you didn't want to leave. I, Assumed you you were trying to, you know, was it pressure from constituents? Or, I mean, wh why did you present that to the board? Things had gotten to the place where that was the, that was it. That was all we were talking about. That's all we were focused on. Every day, we were either inundated with media issues, which drove other conversations throughout the school system and, quite frankly, throughout the community. And they had turned negative. We were not able to get ourselves, you know, a lot of things can happen in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a community that, uh, that are not good and they're not healthy. But when it came to this particular issue, this one, this one put us in a position where we kind of, and I heard it said last night, uh, and I may have said it to, to, to actually generate the thought, we were kind of, we kind of kicked ourselves into neutral and we weren't able to move. And uh, you can't operate like this. I mean, you've got, You've got a, a finite amount of time every year to work with kids, and we found ourselves struggling to get past this, this one issue. Um, and, you know, uh, I take a little bit of blame for that. I'll say that because, and I said this at the press conference, I wish I had done that a week earlier than I did. And I, um, but then we get to a place to where other, you know, other things start to be said, and that created another uh, a bit of, uh, of uh, drama, if you will. And uh, I got to a place to where 
I felt like we needed to have a conversation. If I was that much of a distraction for this for this school system, then I needed I needed to be, um, in my opinion, uh, and and I, I'm I'm relatively thoughtful, and I've got a strong family and and a core group of friends that, uh, as I said earlier, uh, I, I had talked to all of them several times. You know, you get to a place to where you can't be that big of a distraction. And I felt like I was, and that's that's not fair. Um, you know, David asked a David asked a good question. You know, how much have I taken? I've taken a lot. You know, and I'm not saying that for you know sympathy and you know staying. I'm gonna take some more. I took some today, right? And uh, you know, it is what it is. I I I don't I don't I don't you know. People have a lot of opinion about that. I've had a whole lot of people talk to me about that. And they've talked to me about why. You know, all that. So y'all have to think about that as well. Um, I want to believe this, and I'm going to say this to all of y'all, because I know most of you now. I know, I know you or not. You've got a case on yours. Um, <laughs> next time, I've I, I, I got some professional meetings I go to. They have a parking lot, and it's a, called a table. And that's where you put your cell phone when you come in the room. Um, so the next time we want to do one of these, I'm going to ask you all to put your cell phones at the parking lot. Um, and I know everybody except you. I don't know you, but I'm, I bet you. But the rest of you, i kind of gotten to know. So you all got a piece in this, too. How do you think that you've changed? In, how, how do you think, um, who, who will you be moving forward Hmm. Parents, teachers, students, principals. That, how will I move forward? No, I mean, who will you be as far as superintendent? What kind of superintendent moving forward? I mean, have you, mm. How have you changed and, or how will you change? I am not going to allow myself to be bitter about this. I'm not going to allow myself to, to, uh, to invest a whole lot of time and energy in... Uh, and this is going to sound a little strange to you, but I, I've had a whole lot of people want to sit sit down with me and talk about, you know, what what forces or why or who or how has this become such an issue? Personally, and, and I'm, I'll, I'll I'll get criticism for this comment, but I'll make it. This became less about the Udawa scenario and more about Rick Smith some weeks ago, in my opinion. I'm very biased about that, obviously. Um, and so, there, you know, I'm not going to allow myself to uh, to uh, change an awful lot about the way my value system and my belief system and, and what I think you have to do uh, as superintendent. And that goes back to the whole idea of resources. You know, I'm not going to, if this was intended, because if I made noise last year that made people mad or uncomfortable or whatever it might have been over a tax increase, so be it. I'll just say that to y'all. If, it, if, it's, if it's over um, talking about um, part of, uh, of who we are and raising the question about the whole idea of, of uh, a, a changing demographic community and um, what, what I feel like that has been, uh, that hasn't been addressed as much as, as it should have been, so be it. I'm not going to change that. I, I believe that. And, and so, you know, and, and, and again, if it's, if it's about uh, a point in time to where we can't move forward, uh, then I've got to consider that as well. That's that's part of who I am. I'm not going to be stubborn. You know, I'm I'm pretty pretty competitive. I've been competitive all my life, and and so, uh, but there's a difference between. But I'm not going to be st to the point of just saying, well, I'm going to dig my heels in. To David's first question, well, are you going to stay? Or are you going to leave? Yeah, I'm going to stay. Um, the board of education to me last night. Um, you know, I don't, I, I'm going to let y'all decide how to decipher that. You know, that's been an interesting, uh, that's why I needed a little time 
last night. I wanted to think about things a little bit. Um, but and y'all have as well. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank y'all.